Hey, listen, my friend, they lived happily ever after. Have you ever heard that before? Well, you kind of hear it about a story, a fairy tale. It might have been something that's in a wedding that for now on until death do us part, and there's almost a sense of, uh, you know, doves flying and, and starlight shining and pixie dust illuminating the scene. It's a marriage and it's beautiful and it's perfect. But you and I know that's not true. Why? Because listen, there's a war against marriage and that shouldn't surprise you. Number one, listen, who invented marriage? The Bible says God did. Well, if God invented marriage and he loves it, and if Jesus and the church is a symbol as to what marriage is about, then how much does Satan hate marriage? Friends, just look around you. It's absolutely obvious by how uh, governmental powers, cultural powers, um, those who'd want to socially re-engineer our world have attacked marriage. This is what we need to understand. The world portrays marriage uh, as something being evil rather than good. What about all the television broadcasts you see? Marriage is weird. Marriage is to be cheated upon. Marriage is to be mocked from social media, commercials, you name it. Marriage is under attack like never before. This fight is a spiritual fight. It's in the spiritual realm, my friend. God invented marriage. The reason why it's hard is because it's good. And the reason why it's under attack is because Satan hates your marriage. He hates marriage at large. From it comes nations. From it comes a family. From it comes a church. So listen, buckle up. And let's get into the message, the war against marriage. The war of 2024 is against husbands. Husbands. Ephesians chapter five, verse 25 says this, husbands love your wives. Do you guys see any wiggle room in that? See any options in there? No, nope. just as, and by the way, what's our example? Okay, pastor, husbands love our wives. What's the example? Here it is. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Husbands are supposed to be sacrificial providers for their homes. Husbands. Husbands are to be lovers of their wives. Husbands are to take care of their home and the protection of their home and for the supply of their home. Husbands. Today, in our world around us, husbands are made fun of. Husbands are mocked. And a lot of husbands have inflicted a lot of self-inflicted wounds about being a husband. And we don't need to do that. We can follow God's example. Why? What do we do? Verse 26, that he, watch this, that he, Jesus, might sanctify and cleanse her, the church, watch this, with the washing of the water of the word, the husbands to do the same thing, just as Jesus does to us, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish, verse 28, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Now you think about this for a moment. Jesus Christ loved the church so much that he laid down his life. And that's the example for husbands, is to lay down their lives for their wives. He said, oh, pastor, if you knew my wife, you wouldn't lay down your life. <laughs> listen, here's the, here's the amazing thing, men. Listen, I got good news for you. God has anointed the man in marriage to be able to rescue his home. Maybe, listen, what if, what if you're married to an unbelieving, godless woman? God gives you the ability to win her over. It's supernatural. You love on her. You show her the, you ask God, God, how do I love her? Listen, God knows exactly how your wife needs to be loved and he'll tell you if you ask him. Because, you know, you've been trying to figure it out for years and you haven't done it yet. <laughs> Listen, we can't do it on our own. But the husband, in this day and age, marriage is under attack. What does that tell you? It means that Satan hates marriage and Satan hates husbands. Because a husband has the power to make or break a wife. That sounds like a very, very uh, bold and bombastic statement, but it's absolutely true. Have you ever seen a beautiful woman with an ugly man in marriage? So how'd that happen? And then you see how he treats her. And that woman realizes this is a husband. 
We were at dinner the other night and we had the young waitress just kind of eavesdropping our conversation. And I don't know what age she was, but she's young. And she says, I'm done messing around. She said, I want, to, I want a relationship that's going to be a long-term relationship. I want to get married. I want to have a life. And we thought that was very refreshing. Husbands, love your wives, the Bible says. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 21, listen, all the husbands and men should be writing these down. If you're not, then girls and wives write them down for them. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. We all know that, right? You know, we can pull out our tongue and say something to somebody that would not only make their day, but make their life. Did you know that? You can say something to somebody. And by the way, listen, young ladies, young ladies long to hear affirmation from their dads. We live in an age when that's not happening so much, so they find affirmation in, in whatever guy comes along who says a nice word. Those nice words should be coming from a dad. We'll talk about this more later. But husbands ought to be speaking to their wives in words that give life. If we're going to make it in 2024, the number one thing under attack is your home, your family, your life, your children, and you being a husband. Man, I'm speaking to you. These four things are very important that we need to be careful as men, as Christian men. We're talking about biblical Manhood here, we're talking about the tone of our voice when we speak. We can, we can say the right thing the wrong way. It doesn't come out right. Now, listen, I'll throw myself under the bus. A lot of times I say something and I meant something completely and then it comes out and it's like, oh no, can I reel that back in? Because everything about it was right, but it didn't sound right. And then you feel like you're backed into a corner. What are you gonna do? The tone of your voice matters, how we speak, and uh, then the use of the words that we select. Husbands, we need to use the right kind of words. We need to tell our wives rightly, properly, not in a way that's fake or false in any way, but we need to tell them, you look beautiful today. I love you. That was a great job you did. That was an amazing achievement on that project, or that was a great meal, or that was a wonderful evening out. We need to say it. Well, she already knows it. Doesn't matter if she knows it, say it. We need to speak it. And then also the environment. This is something that is very powerful. There's an environment. A husband has the power to affect the environment or the atmosphere of where he lives. Did you know that? A husband has the power to shape an environment in a home. I grew up in a very stern home, a very quiet home. I know you find that hard to believe. But see, I'm making up for lost time. We didn't. <laughs> very quiet home. You could hear the grandfather clock ticking. And uh, just a really quiet house, uh, but very stern. And when my dad was sick, my dad never repeated anything. He would never repeat a word. You either caught it the first time or you'd catch the back of his hand. You better be listening. And um, the tone of the voice and what we say, but the atmosphere. As boys, you know, we'd goof off. We're boys. Boys goof off. But then when my dad would pull up, everything changed. <laughs> was it a, oh boy, dad's home, let's play, let's fight, we're going to climb the tree together, we're going to go. Mm. It was straighten up, stand straight, tuck your shirt in, and don't talk unless you're spoken to. What kind of atmosphere do we as husbands leave or create in our homes? God cares about that. And there's a war on husbands to have husbands be something that is maniacal or hard are cruel, and that's the way of the world. And that's an offense to God. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, 1 Peter 3, verse 7 says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with them, that is your wife, with understanding. Okay, that's impossible. You know that, right? Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. You can't do that, it's impossible. That verse right there tells you the Holy Spirit must be active in our lives. <laughs> we must look at that verse this way. Husbands, 
Likewise, dwell with them with understanding. Dear God in heaven, help me to understand my wife. And that's not any attack on me or my wife. It is a human, natural life issue. We, we can say something. She, t- she takes it different. She can say it. I got it different. It's like, what? What's going on? This is part of the fall. We need to navigate that. But we need the Holy Spirit to help us in our relationship. And we need the Holy Spirit's power to cause us to be husbands. Giving honor to the wife. Giving honor to the wife. What does that mean? Put her on the top shelf. That's what it means. Leave the verse up here real quick. I'm not, I'm not really big on this, but I read a book on this. You know, ballet? You know. <laughs> ballet. Did you know in the, in the original ballet, did you know that the woman always wore white? I don't know what they do nowadays, but she always wore white. And does anybody know what he wore? Black. Do you know the, the, the stage was what color? Black. The, the, it, the color, what was the screen, the uh, curtains? Black. Everything's black except what? Her. And do you know when she's flying around? The audience only saw her being elevated, being pro, uh, propelled, uh, caught, gracefully put down on, on the earth, and then, and then thrown up again and spun about. She was the only one that you could see. And in marriage, it's to be like that. Because a, a man ought to be secure in who he is and his calling in life as a husband. That God is called... You, perhaps, not all men are called to be married. Some men are called to be single. But some are called to be married. And the way that we are to live our lives is like Christ served the church. And what does he do? He elevates the church. He gifts the church. He blesses the church. And let me tell you, you have a man that takes care of you that way, uh, you're going to keep him. He's worth keeping. He's a keeper. Boy, it's quiet in here right now. (laughs) Giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. That's not an offensive statement. It means that she can't bench 250. (laughs) And as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Isn't it amazing how many men think they're praying and God's not listening because he has a horrible marriage relationship with his wife? Husbands. God made us husbands. God loves that design. And he's for us. Ephesians 5, verse 33, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is amazing because if he loves her the way Christ loves the church, she will respect him. There's none to like, you know, okay, I've got, I've got three loves in on you, and you've only got one respect on me. Come on. There's none of that. Love keeps no scores. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 16. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 16 says, For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save your wife? Paul the Apostle was writing to believers in Corinth, and they were very, very... A uh, messed up church came out of a very, very uh, cult-like culture in Greece. And um, many of them got saved. But sometimes, listen, maybe the husband got saved, but the wife didn't. Or the wife got saved and not the husband. So what are you supposed to do about that? The Bible says, win them to Christ. If you're married to somebody who's not a Christian, that's your mission field. Oh, I wish God would send me to Peru. Well, maybe, listen, maybe your missionary field is sleeping right next to you. Your husband or your wife. Which leads us to number seven, which is regarding the wife. The war of 2024 is against the wife. The wife, think about it. Think about pop culture today. Think about culture at all. Think about what our kids are being taught. Think about when you mention the word husband, wife, marriage. What do you hear among your friends or neighbors or your acquaintances? How do they view what a wife ought to be? It's predominantly mocked, made fun of, the institution of being a wife. Listen, 
Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4 says, an excellent wife is the crown of her husband. That word crown in Hebrew is the surrounding wreath of glory. Let me read it then this way. An excellent wife is the crown of glory that surrounds her husband's head. That's beautiful. There's a scene in Jurassic Park, the first one, where Malcolm says, uh, the woman asks him, uh, scientist Malcolm, are you, are, you, uh, are you married? He says, oh no, I'm single, but I'm always looking for a future ex, Mrs. Malcolm. What a disgusting statement that is. Oh, I'm always on the hunt for my next ex-wife. But is that not the way of this world? We name the name of Jesus. Listen, the number, look, I'm up here on Sundays and Wednesdays, but my family knows me. Right? Who knows me better than anybody else on this planet? My wife. And you know, listen, you can look at a woman, I'm telling you right now, you can look at a woman before you ever have a chance to talk to her, or maybe you'll never talk to her at all. She's just walking by. And being involved in ministry as long as we have, you can look at a woman and you could tell if she's abused or not. I don't know if you know that or not. But if this is the work that you do and we do that kind of work, you can, I can tell when a woman's abused or not by how she carries herself, the look in her eyes, the demeanor on her face, what is known as her deportment, how does she carry herself, her shoulders, her purpose. Serious things. Why do we bring this up? Because we are forming a barrier against the attacks of the enemy against our lives this year. I can't speak for any other church, but it's my prayer that this church not survive 2024, but conquer, flourish, thrive in 2024. The Bible says in, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. I can tell you right now, Proverbs 18, 22 is exactly what happened in my life. God saved me at the age of 19, because if I, I probably wouldn't have lived to the age of 20. God saves me at the age of 19. I make this conclusion. I'm going to make money, live at the beach, and be single for the rest of my life and serve God. That was my plan. Totally committed to that. Make money, live at the beach, serve God. And um, that was all working fine, by the way. And then um, I was at work. It just happened to be the... I was playing volleyball at the beach. That was part of my job. <laughs> and a friend of mine says, hey, Jack, there's a great Christian girl over there walking with her friend. She's a great Christian girl. And I said, yeah, right. You know, don't, don't talk about that. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. And um, he said, come on, come on, come on. So he introduces us. She's cute. She's cute. But that's, that's it. And um, so then we're talking, and then we talk some more, and then talk, and then a few, take this now out a few weeks, and now about the third week, I remember thinking, okay, I have to make a decision here. I got to stick to my, my rules, my plan. <laughs> She's messing up my plan. <laughs> but you know what, you know, listen, take, take this if it works for you. Um, here I had I, I was conf I was I was thrown on the horns of a conundrum. <laughs> what shall I do? I had hung around with her too long, where I just couldn't walk away. But if I decided to walk away, I somehow knew inside that I was walking away from something that would not be gotten back. So. When, you have, when you're having that battle of, if, do I commit or do I walk away? And the question you must ask yourself is, can you walk away without looking back? Well, that was easy. No, I could not. So I don't know how soon into our relationship I bought a ring, but I bought a ring without her knowing about it. I got a ring. And I don't know how many months I waited, but I asked her to marry me. Why? Because I concluded there is no way that I could live the rest of my life knowing that some other guy has got this gem of a woman 
He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. You know, the Bible tells us, husbands, love your wives. Wives, respect your husbands. In other words, guard yourself against the temptation to go with what our emotions demand and dictate. Notice this, when the Bible tells us for the husbands to love their wives, that is something that is unnatural. It means that we need supernatural love from God to love our wives the way that they're to be loved. And then husbands are to be respected by their wives. And all the wives I can hear moaning right now on the other end of this camera, oh, Jack, you gotta be kidding me. But listen, that is what God has commanded. And so the both of you are to nurture a walk with God that is one that is honoring Him. You need to fight and to defend and to stand strong for your marriage. Friends, listen. Leaving your husband and your wife for something greener on the other side of the fence is not the answer. You're just gonna carry all the junk that messed up your marriage into this next one. Above all things, it's an affront to God. The Bible says that God hates divorce. And by all means, if it can be worked out, the Word of God has given you the instructions to do that. Fight together. It is, it is a combat that we're in together. It is a war against darkness to bring about the will of God in your life. Marriage, listen, marriage is not necessarily designed to make you happy. I always get an eyebrow or two raised when I say that. Oh, I thought, Pastor Jack, that this man was gonna come into my life to make me happy. No, God brought that man, that woman into your life to make you holy. And as believers, you're to be doing this together. In Mark chapter 10, verse nine, the Bible says that really it's the vow that you took that until death do we part. God heard you say that. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder, let no man separate. That's the Bible truth, friend. Fight for your marriage. You want a war for your marriage. You want a war for your children. You want a war because God has said to fight for that. Great institution that he made that no man can redefine but God alone. Listen, we're here to help you with your walk with Jesus. That's what we're all about. We love studying the Bible. I think you know that by now. We want you to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's why we'd love to have you go, with no obligation, have you go to jackgibbs.com and see and peruse other things that are there for you to study, to watch, so that we might help you get closer to Jesus in the Word of God together. Until next time, God bless you. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Living in the Days of Deception the best-selling book from Jack Hibbs is now available. Lies that surround us are growing more frequent, more sinister. In politics, social media, government, even in the church, distinguishing truth from disinformation has become more difficult than ever before. Living in the Days of Deception is a Watchman on the Wall proclamation that teaches us how to discern truth from the culture's lies and protect us from the deceit that bombards us daily. Order now and receive exclusive video bonus content from Jack Hibbs. Four key educational videos to help you know how to identify and combat falsehoods masquerading as truth. Be equipped with eyes wide open. Receive Living in the Days of Deception and the exclusive bonus videos when you make a gift of any amount to the Ministry of Real Life. Get your copy at jackhibbs.com or by calling 877-777-2346. It's time to act. Order now. Life is full of fear, doubt, and worry. The more you listen to and see the world today, the easier it is to feel hopeless and helpless. Amidst the confusion, a voice of hope has emerged. The Real Life Network. Founded by Jack Hibbs, the Real Life Network is a free digital media platform, void of the noise of secular media that attack people of faith. Click on the QR code or sign up for free at reallifenetwork.com. Fast forward your faith. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us 
in sharing this message in real and practical ways. We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.